Hello, and welcome to today's presentation by Lighthouse Immigrant Advocates. Today's presentation is about the New American Legal Clinic and the Q&A session with myself, Eliana Bonson. Before we continue, I would like to let you know that this is a pre-recorded presentation. So at the end, we will review all of the pre-submitted questions um, and popular questions that volunteers have regarding our clinic and the program that we are running. Again, I would like to thank you for joining us here today. This presentation will provide a little more clarity on who we are and how we are assisting the new Afghan arrivals. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation today. I also wanted to mention that at the end, if there's anything that we did not cover that you still have some questions or doubts about, I will include my contact information where you can email me or call me and I would be more than happy to clarify anything that you still um, need more clarification on. Again, my name is Ileana Ponce. I am the Outreach Program Coordinator here at Lighthouse Immigrant Advocates, otherwise known as LIA. Uh, thank you for joining us. I will be overseeing all of the volunteer programs uh, here, and I oversee uh, the New American Legal Clinic, which we will, you will hear me refer to as NELC throughout the presentation. Um, and I am also the representative in our community for um, LIA. So I do speaking events. Um, I, um, you know, present who we are um, and just get the word out of what we're doing here out in the community. So it's a pleasure to meet you all. Uh, without further ado, let's continue with today's presentation. In today's presentation, we will go over the following things. I'm going to go um, over the first subject, which is who we are about Lighthouse Immigrant Advocates, otherwise known as LIA. Um, we're going to review what happened in Afghanistan, LIA's response to the crisis that happened in Afghanistan, and the NELC model. Again, that's a new American legal clinic. Um, why NELC matters, why we need your help. And then we're going to review volunteer commitments, volunteer descriptions, volunteer training, and a Q&A. Um, again, those are previously submitted questions. So we're going to go over some uh, popular questions that were submitted. If there's anything that you still need to address, feel free to contact me and I would be more than happy to assist you with that. Who is LIA? Well, we are a nonprofit office, um, law office serving in the West Michigan area, particularly established here in Holland, Michigan. Um, we've been serving since 2015, and we offer a variety of services here. Uh, we offer renewal services, anything from green card, DACA, work permit, TPS. We also do naturalization, VAWA, waivers, family reunifications, refugee and asylum services. Um, we are a team of nine people, and we are very passionate about the work that we do. And our goal is to serve and meet the legal needs of immigrants and refugees in our community, uh, and specifically um, those who build and um, contribute to our community because they are valuable to us. And this is why when the crisis in Afghanistan occurred, um, we did not hesitate as an organization to step up to the plate and assist with whatever needs um, the Afghan community would need. So with that being said, I wanted to um, go over with you what happened in Afghanistan. So I want to clarify the question of how did our Afghan neighbors arrive to the country? So we're going to review a summary of what happened in Afghanistan, which led to one of the largest evacuations that happened in um, the U.S. history. On August 15th of 2021, the Taliban overthrew the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan and reestablished the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan under their rule. By doing so, they overthrew the capital and they also overthrew President Ashraf Ghani. Uh, this triggered one of the largest uh, military evacuations. So from August 14th through the 31st, 123,000 people were evacuated. Amongst that population, um, we, there were people who were foreign diplomatic staff, military personnel, Afghan allies, journalists, activists, a very high, um, highly vulnerable population, and those that are at high risk of persecution from the Taliban. So the other thing I wanted to mention here is that all of the people that you saw in the news, all of those videos, all those people that 
were in the airport that we were seeing live images um, of people in the airport under attack. Those are all the people that we are currently assisting. All of those are real people that we are now seeing in our office. Um, and it just puts into perspective who we are dealing with and how serious all of this is and how important it is. So now that we know what happened in Afghanistan and how our Afghan neighbors arrived to the country, we're going to review um, LIA's response to the Afghan crisis and our NALC model. We'll review how it started and the purpose of it and how it works. September of 2021, it was announced that Michigan would be receiving about 1,300 Afghan arrivals through the resettlement agencies, such as Bethany Christian Services and Samaritas. It was also announced that West Michigan would be receiving about 21% of this population that was arriving in Michigan. LIA recognizes that legal status is vital, is vital to every new arrival's long-term and stability for the future. So we created, in, um, in November, we created and launched the OAR clinic. Um, so this was the, this is, as you can see, the first phase here in um, our program. Um, it says intake interviews, but this is where the OAR clinic falls under. So that started back in November of 2021. And the way we were able to launch this is by partnering with Bethany Christian Services and Samaritas to assist them with the legal needs of our new neighbors. So when they get resettled, they also need um, legal services specifically to address their legal status here in the country. Um, so we created meaningful partnerships to assist us with the legal needs of our new Afghan neighbors. So we were able to uh, make um, a partnership with Immigrant Connections, Michigan Immigrant Rights Center, Justice for Our Neighbors. We also have pro bono attorneys assisting us. And um, we also have the support of Treetop Collectives, um, which I will mention later on um, how they fall under this whole uh, plan. So the goal, of, the goal is to help all of our new neighbors and um, to help them meet their immigration goals and to obtain legal status here in the U.S. Um, so the NELC is just an efficient and collaborative way that we are doing this. Um, so I want to review how um, the process goes, how it starts, and then what the end goal is for all of them. So if we look on the screen, NELC or the New American Legal Clinic is the big umbrella and everything falls underneath it with steps. So step one is the OER um, clinic or the intake interview. So this is where we initiate every person's case. Every individual's case is open. This is where we collect all of the information. So we collect um, their travel history to the US, their account of what happened in Afghanistan, because every individual has their own story, the reasons why um, they feared staying in Afghanistan, what kind of persecution they were um, under, what, what was the danger of them staying, why they felt the need to flee. All of this information is collected um, in this first phase. And this is actually the phase that we are um, recruiting volunteers for. So we have the intake specialist volunteers, um, which are the people who are directly interviewing all of these individuals. Um, we have the hospitality who assisting, is assisting uh, the clinic, uh, just making sure that everyone feels welcome and safe. Um, we wanna make sure that we're creating a safe space where um, they feel comfortable telling their stories. Um, and then we have the administrative assistant um, volunteers, which will assist with um, uploading documents, collecting documents, data entry, um, all the back end stuff that is going to help with uh, creating their case. So that's the first phase of our NALC model. Um, after we finish up these interviews, the attorneys review all of the information that was collected, and then they have to determine what is the best course of action or what is the best legal remedy for them. So they can either be referred to our asylum clinic so they can apply for asylum, or if they have any different, a uh, different kind of remedy, such an such as an SIV, which is a special immigrant visa, um, COM, or any other um, family petition, any other um, situation or remedy that would um, be other than asylum, 
that's where they get referred out to our partners again um, the all of our partnerships that I mentioned before um, they will assist us with um, meeting their immigrant uh, immigration goals um, so that's the whole process of this um, so if they do get referred to our asylum clinic that moves on to our next phase so in this next phase um, which is set to start in April we are assisting um, all of our Afghan neighbors to apply for asylum so we'll actually need volunteers to assist with um, the filling out of the asylum application and then we're going to have a group of pro bono attorneys that will review their applications and also assist them with preparing for their interviews uh, with the government so the end goal is to make sure that we are assisting everyone that no one falls through the cracks and that everyone is seen um, it is quite a big operation and it brings us to the next next point of why NELC matters and why we will need you all. Um, so first let's review why this whole operation matters. Again, so the big question is what's the urgency or what's the importance of what we are doing? Um, so I want to explain a couple of things here. Um, it matters because our Afghan newcomers arrive here under a temporary status. Again, it's temporary. It does just because they are here in the country does not mean that they are able to stay here forever. Um, the humanitarian parole status was granted due to the emergency situation, and it's only um, valid for two years from their arrival date. Um, however, if they need to apply for asylum, they have one year from their entry to the uh, U.S. Uh, to apply for their asylum. So that being said, um, we have some new arrivals that arrived as early as um, August 27th. That means that we have to assist them with their asylum application. It has to be submitted before August 27th of 2022. That being said, the asylum process is a very difficult process and um, it requires a lot of attention to detail, um, a lot of support and evidence to help them out with that, um, with petitioning that status. So um, in order to apply for asylum, asylum, we have to collect as much information as possible to assist them with that. So this brings us to the next point of why we need you as volunteers. We need volunteers because it takes a village. Again, we're a team of nine people, and although we're a small team, we have big ambitions. LA is the only nonprofit law office serving immigrant and refugee needs, regardless of income, in our county. Um, and we are extending our services to our new neighbors because we understand that this is literally a life or death situation. In addition to all of the obstacles that I previously mentioned um, and listed, they also have to navigate through this hard and difficult process in a brand new country where they're unfamiliar with the language, the culture, the laws, everything is different. So adding that difficulty to it um, makes it a little more scarier. And we want to assist them with the process and we want to make it easier for them. We want to make sure that we are helping them so they don't have to ever fear that they will be re returning to a country where their lives are in danger. So our mission is very important to us and we want to assist them with this process, but we can't do it alone. Because again, we are a small team. However, we have this big goal that we want to complete and we're able to do so with your assistance. We actually launched the OAR clinic um, like I previously mentioned, in November of 2021, and we were able to see about 120, um, a little more than that, maybe, um, excuse me, the number escapes me, but we were able to see um, a large number of individuals come through our doors. And the only reason we were able to do that was with the help of our volunteers. Um, we had intake volunteers, we had hospitality volunteers, we had admin data entry volunteers, all did amazing, amazing work. Um, and we all united together 
and we were all able to help these individuals move on to the next process of our um, NELC model. So all of the people that we had seen in 2021 and early um, in January, they're all eligible. I'm sorry, not all eligible, but we've all, uh, the attorneys have determined all of the remedies that they're eligible for. And some of them are ready for the next step, which is the asylum process. So with that being said, that's why it's important. And that's why we need you. That's why we need our volunteers, because we need your assistance to help us fulfill this mission and help us fulfill this vision. Um, so we are counting on our volunteers to assist us with this uh, big dream of ours and to assist us with um, creating a happy and safe space, a good life for our new neighbors. So what are the volunteer commitments? Um, so let's review those together today. Volunteer commitments, um, we are asking that if you're interested in volunteering, that you volunteer five or 10 consecutive, um, consecutive weeks, so weekly commitments. Um, we are asking for 25 volunteers in the Grand Rapids area and 15 volunteers in the Holland area. Um, now, because a large number of our new Afghan arrivals are still in the process of being resettled, um, a large number of them are in the Grand Rapids area. And so we are extending our services um, to a remote clinic. Um, so we are traveling to Grand Rapids to meet those needs. Um, so we'll be there twice a week um, on Tuesdays and Fridays. And as you can see, we will be operating from uh, on Tuesday 10 to 5.30 and on Friday 10 to 3. Um, it's broken up into three shifts um, on Tuesday. So it's 10 to 1, 1 to 4, 4 to 5.30. So if you decide to volunteer, we do need to um, have you commit to one of those shifts at least once a week if you're looking for more volunteer opportunities or more volunteer hours, you are more than welcome to help out more than that. Um, so we only require one weekly commitment, but again, if your heart is set on serving more, then we can definitely accommodate that. And then on Fridays, um, we have two shifts. So it's a shorter day, it's 10 to three. Um, so we have shift one, which is 10 to one, and then one to three. And then we have um, our single location here, here at the Holland office. Um, we are going to be operating 10 to 5.30 as well, with the same uh, shift hours broken up. Um, so we are looking for volunteers in these um, areas. Um, I want to um, also extend an invitation if you are unable to commit to weekly commitments or um, five to 10 consecutive uh, weekly commitments. Um, we also have on-call positions available. Um, that's uh, something that we have on hand because uh, due to um, COVID and just emergency situations, sometimes we may need to call back up. So it's always good to have those. Um, and then the other thing that I did want to explain is um, in Grand Rapids, we will be operating with um, our partners at Treetops Collectives. So um, again, it's twice a week in Grand Rapids and just one day in Holland, uh, but we are looking to fill those positions um, and hours here at both locations. So now that we know what um, expectations or commitments uh, volunteers uh, are committing to, let's go over the volunteer descriptions. So we have a couple of different uh, positions. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, they would be part of the first uh phase in our NELC model, which is the OER clinic. So we have intake specialist, um, an intake specialist position. So this position is actually um, the one of the most vital ones um, because you get to interview our uh, newcomers or our new Afghan neighbors um, directly. So you would complete an initial, an initial questionnaire where you would uh, collect as much information as possible to create a case for our client. Um, the typ a typical interview takes about an hour and 30 minutes. Um, and in one intake interview, you may be interviewing one individual or two at the same time. It just depends on um, 
you know, the size of the family. Um, there's um, a whole different um, dynamic that goes on in this room with your client. Um, so it is a little, um, you know, more intense because you have to uh, collect information. You have to have that information translated. Um, you have to be on the phone with your translator um, and ask the questions and at the same time, uh, make sure that you are maintaining that uh, communication with your client, even though you have a translator on the phone. So um, for this, just because there's a lot going on in this position, we do prefer that you have strong typing skills and st strong computer skills. Um, again, only because it does require um, a little more um, knowledge with technology and to you know troubleshoot anything that's not working. But um, I do want to mention that you are never alone. Um, and all of our training does cover all of what is expected in this position. So it is a very unique position and it's one of my favorite ones because you do create, get to create some kind of relationship with the client that you are interviewing. We also have hospitality volunteers. Um, our hospitality volunteers are the ones who are greeting our clients, um, you know, seeing them into the building, serving some coffee, tea, just making them feel welcome, making them uh, feel safe because in the end, we do want to provide a safe space. Um, you have to keep in mind that they have been through so much already um, and they're probably still going through a lot, adjusting to a new country, a new culture, a new language. So um, we do have uh, translation uh, services available for you to communicate with clients. Some clients do speak English, but the majority do not. Um, so we try to, again, just make them feel comfortable and just explain to them what is going on. The hospitality volunteer will also be explaining, um, you know, what to expect in the meeting um, and also just, you know, preparing them for their appointment. Um, and then if they do bring any children along, we do see families. Um, we assist them with interacting with their children and entertaining them while the parents are being interviewed. Um, a lot of the parents um, really appreciate that and uh, prefer to have their ch child out in the waiting area playing around. So it's always helpful to have um, our hospitality volunteers assist us with uh, this portion of the clinic. Um, you would also be responsible for cleaning up the waiting area, disinfecting um, any rooms that are being used, any toys that were being used, and just overall keeping the cleanliness of the space and returning everything to its original state. Just making sure that we are staying healthy, staying safe, and uh, providing a safe, clean space for everyone. We also have um, admin positions open for our volunteers. So this position is um, working directly with our Afghan clients as well. Um, so we would uh, prepare the folders that are going to be used. Uh, we would collect folders at the end of each appointment. We would collect documents, make copies of them, upload them, create digital folders. Um, you would probably be doing some filing, um, again, scanning, renaming files, just making sure that we keep everything organized so we um, have a strong case um, for each client. Um, you will be dealing with a lot of technology, so we do prefer that you have strong typing skills, strong computer skills, and that you're tech savvy. Um, again, just to troubleshoot any problems that you have going on. Um, so that's um, really much uh, the the explanation of this position in itself. So it's not very hard, um, but you would be working with me more directly and um, I would definitely be available to assist you with any questions or concerns that you may have. Now that we reviewed all of the volunteer positions, I do want to clarify that um, you're never going to be alone. Um, so I will always be around to support you. And if I'm not around, um, one of my team members um, would be more than happy to assist you with any questions or concerns. But there's always going to be someone supervising, um, someone that you can um, refer to if you have any questions or concerns. Most of the time it's going to be me, um, but uh, I don't want you to feel like you're going to be thrown into this on your own. I just want to let you know that you will be supported. Um, there will be other people there present to assist you. Um, and I will definitely be there to guide you if you need any assistance or you have any questions with anything. 
That brings me to the next point, um, volunteer training. So I want to review how we are going to proceed with training um, and go over those details with you. So the volunteer training is actually a training guide. So it's a document that I can share with you. Um, it's uh, I can email it to you. It contains uh, links with videos and quizzes. Um, it's all re done remotely. Um, so if you do have any questions or concerns that you are not um, clear on, you can always contact me and I can I would be more than happy to assist you with you know clarifying any questions that you have. The training, because the training is remote, it is self-paced, and we do require that the training is completed be first, before your first day as a volunteer. Um, so I would um, have to follow up with you, uh, assign you to a shift, a position, and I would be able to, um, you know, clarify any questions and concerns before then. But again, the training is mandatory. Um, and that being said, I do want to um, also address that. Um, even though you are signing up for a preferred shift, we would like to cross train everybody. Um, in the case being that, again, we have an emergency, people are out sick or out on vacation, and we don't have anyone on call available, then if you're available, then we would um, have you step in into a certain position um, or fill in a certain need so we can um, continue on with the operation. Again, because this is so time sensitive and the um, urgency of this is so high. We want to make sure that we're not rescheduling appointments or canceling appointments. So we want to make sure that we're meeting these um, needs and appointments on time to make sure that we are keeping up with our timeline. And so that's really the reason why um, we would like to cross train everybody. Um, I don't want you to feel um, overwhelmed. We will definitely try to keep you um, in the preferred position that uh, you signed up for. Um, this is a very rare case. Um, in case that, again, we, someone is out um, and they, for some reason, cannot come in, then, um, and we don't have any on-call volunteers available, then that's when we would ask you to step in to meet that need. But again, it is very um, rare, very unusual that this happens, um, but I did want to give you that heads up and so that way it doesn't catch you off guard. So um, with that being said, uh, the training guide will provide training for all of all of this. So you should have um, all of the materials that you need to be successful at your role. So that concludes our presentation regarding the New American Legal Clinic um, and what LA is doing with our clinic model and why it's important. Um, I hope that this presentation was helpful for you. Um, I do want to thank you for your time, for even considering um, the, um, even considering assisting us with our our mission and our goal. So I hope that this answered all of the questions. And if you have any questions or concerns, I have my contact information here that I will keep up as I go over some popular questions. Um, I also want to refer you to our website. Uh, feel free to check us out if you're not very familiar with us. It contains more information about who we are. Um, and then we also have a YouTube channel. And there's a video there um, that is titled, This is Who We Are. Um, we did it for one of our um, campaigns, uh, Strength and Story campaign. Um, and it does a very good job at summarizing who we are and what we stand for. Um, you can also follow us on social media, get to know us a little more. Um, we have a Facebook page and Instagram page available. So without further ado, I'm going to dive into um, some of the questions that our volunteers ask. I'm going to address them um, and answer them. So, and if again, if you have any other questions or concerns, feel free to call me. Um, you can reach out to the office number um, on the screen or you can email me directly. One of the questions that were submitted um, was, will there be translation uh, provided or how will we communicate with our new Afghan neighbors? Um, so great questions. So we actually do have uh, translation services available. Um, they are over the phone um, and we have had a great success with them. I heard positive feedback from all of our volunteers. I have personally used them as well. Um, we have some great, uh, we use telelanguages as our um, translation service provider, and we have had tremendous success, and um, 
uh, you know, a, a lot of the times the idea of using a translation service is a little intimidating, but they make it super easy. Um, and all of the interpreters that are available on there are extremely professional and they make it easy. Um, if they have trouble understanding you or, um, you know, they don't understand a question, then they, um, you know, ask clarifying questions. So um, they make the process easier. So that way your client is really understanding what you're trying to communicate with them. Um, you may use the translation service if you are an intake specialist, hospitality volunteer, um, even admins, actually all of the positions, you are able to use all of them if you need it. Um, one thing I do want to address is that at the Holland office, at our um, office, we do have our office phones that you can use to call out the translation service. Um, however, for the Grand Rapids uh, crew, because we do not have office phones accessible at that location, we um, will be required to use our own personal phones to call the service. So I do want to address that. And if you have any questions or concerns regarding that, um, please feel free to reach out. I also had another question submitted um, asking if you're able to um, volunteer for multiple positions or multiple shifts. So uh, let me answer those two questions for you. So yes, you are able to volunteer for multiple positions. However, you cannot fulfill those two positions at the same time. You would have to sign up for two different shifts if you want to sign up for two different positions. Um, if you're also wanting to, again, volunteer for more than one shift, you are more than welcome to do so. However, you are only required to sign up for one shift for a week. Um, so one shift, excuse me, one shift per week. So, and that would um, be part of your five to 10 week commitment. So um, you are more than welcome to um, help out in, um, you know, more than one shift, um, more than uh, one position. Um, you would just have to talk to me and I would be able to accommodate that, uh, make sure that we have you all set up and that way we are able to um, re-ensure that you are successful at your position. Someone also asked if we would be providing transportation to Grand Rapids. Unfortunately, at this moment, we are unable to provide transportation to the Grand Rapids location. However, if um, you know, you do end up volunteering at Grand Rapids and you meet someone from the Holland area that um, you can carpool with. That is also an option. But again, unfortunately, at this time, we do not have um, the tools or uh, the capacity to provide transportation uh, to the location. So you would have to find your own transportation. Another question that was submitted was, um, are we able to ask for time off? Um, so addressing if you need to go out on a trip or vacation. Um, so yes, um, if you are volunteering either five to 10 weeks and for some reason you have to go out of town or something unexpected happens, that's completely fine. Just make me aware of the change um, in advance, um, at least a week in advance. So that way we can um, accommodate and then find someone to replace you and that way we can continue on with the operation so yes you are able to take time off i do require at least um a one week's notice um if you're going out of town or um, if something unexpected comes up an emergency just again feel free to call me and i will make sure to make the necessary adjustments i've also received a question um wanting to clarify the training materials again the training is done remotely um, and you would gain experience by being in person. And um, just to reiterate, I will be present at all of the clinics. So I will be there if you have any questions or concerns. And there's also going to be other people who can assist you. Um, some previous volunteers who helped us out the first time will also be there. Um, not all the time, but the, some of them will be there to provide some guidance and tips. Um, so just make sure that you watch all of the videos in the training modules, um, complete them, and then we... Um, can answer any other questions or concerns that you may have, but everything that you need will be in that guide. So it's a couple of videos. Um, there's some question modules um, and then um, just all of the materials that you will need to read over to prepare. Uh, so that way you are able to um, fulfill your position successfully. And because we are doing these on laptops, um, all of the intake interviews we're doing them on laptops, 
And I received a question about, will laptops be provided or do I need to bring my own? So we will be providing all of the laptops. Um, we actually um, have um, our own um, that we will be using. And the only reason that we are using our own is because we need to make sure that we are under a secure network and make sure that we keep that information confidential. So no need to bring your own laptop. We will provide all of the materials that you need, pens, notebooks, um, if you need to take notes. Um, the only thing that we will um, not be providing at the Grand Rapids location is the phones for the translation services. So um, I do want to mention that once again, um, because unfortunately we do not have the ability to bring our office phones over there. So we do need to um, try to uh, use um, our own phones for that. Um, that may change in the future, but for now, for the time being, we do need to use our own phones for the translation services in Grand Rapids. I also uh, received another question asking if there's an opportunity to shadow someone um, if they are new or if they don't feel comfortable with doing the position alone. Um, this may be a possibility, but I don't want to guarantee it. Um, so there are some previous volunteers that um, had decided to recommit to their uh, volunteer position. Um, and if you are able to come in and shadow them, especially for the intake specialist part. Um, I can schedule that. However, it's not a guarantee. I may not always have someone um, um, available that you can shadow. However, as time goes by and then uh, you get comfortable in your position, um, I may have someone shadow you in the future. Um, but I will also have handouts um, present here at the um, locations where we are running the operations where you can use it to guide yourself. So again, I will be around for any kind of support that you need. Um, I want to make sure that you feel comfortable and that you're feeling like you have all of the tools that, that you need to be successful. But um, I'm always around and I would be more than happy to help you with any questions or concerns that you may have. With that, I would like to conclude all of the questions um, that were previously submitted. Again, I hope that this provided some more clarification of what we are doing, why it's important, and hopefully provided some clarification on um, what you can expect as a volunteer. Um, I want to thank you once more for your time, for considering in helping us out or signing up to help us out. Feel free to contact me if you have any further questions or concerns. Um, but again, we sincerely appreciate your time and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you and have a great day.